friends, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name's Jenna, I'm happy to have you here, and I am a full-time reseller. I sell clothing online for a living, and I absolutely love it. I love sharing my journey here on YouTube, and I thought I would do a Q&A video today just because I haven't posted one of these in a while, and I'm constantly just getting different questions, um, whether it be through Instagram or comments, things like that, and while I try to get back to as many as I can, I like doing Q&As just to answer a bunch at once. So the other day I posted a little question box on my Instagram story. So if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely follow because that's usually the easiest way for me to post these questions or like asking for questions. So it's empty hanger on Instagram and I got a ton of responses of questions you guys were wondering about reselling and Poshmark, ThreadUp, a bunch of different stuff. So. I've compiled a list of 50 questions. I literally think I got hundreds and I went through and I tried to pick the most popular ones, the ones that were asked multiple times or ones I feel like I might not have answered before. Although if you've seen my other Q and A's, some of them might be a little bit repetitive. Um, but yeah, we're gonna go through 50 questions all about reselling today and hopefully this will keep you company while you are listing, shipping, whatever it may be that I can keep you busy. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions. Okay, so getting into the questions, I do have everything kind of organized on my phone, so you'll probably see me pick up my phone and look at it quite a bit. Um, I try to group the questions by categories, so I have four categories, reselling in general, Poshmark, ThreadUp, and social media questions. So um, I'll put timestamps down in the description box if you're like only interested in one. But like I said, maybe you can just like listen to this in the car or wherever you are. You don't necessarily have to watch me, but it might be a little bit long. And also I just wanna say that everything I'm talking about and answering is obviously my opinion. There's no right way, there's no wrong way. If you have a way of doing things that is working for you in your business, go for it. It's just to give you a different perspective or idea of how I do things. So let's go ahead and get into the reselling questions. And the first one, um, I got this question in different forms quite a bit, and it was how long before you can uh, make enough income to pay your bills and basically be full-time sustainable on reselling. And of course, this is gonna be different for everyone. For me, when I started reselling, it was just a hobby. I was just trying to get rid of stuff in my closet. I did have a full-time job. I was working in admissions for a school, and I loved doing that. However, it was also a little bit, um, redundant, I didn't have a lot of opportunity for growth, and I just felt a little bit stuck, like I could do more, and the other thing is I had like tons of ideas and I felt like my ideas were never heard, it's like you had to follow the corporate way, so I kind of wanted to have my own business, but back to reselling, I was um, doing it as a hobby, I was making a good amount of money, I started making more money than I was making at my full-time job, and about six months into me reselling from when I started to when I decided to quit my job and go full time is about the time frame it was for me. Of course, this is going to vary for anyone else. It depends on, you know, what your bills are, what your lifestyle is like, if you are single, if you have other people helping support you. I mean, just so many factors go into it. But for me, it was about six months. And when I was able to quit my full time job and dedicate myself full time to reselling, I was able to then increase my income as well because I could really devote myself to it so I could spend all my time on this one area versus splitting it you know between two different things my job and reselling so for me it was about six months but of course that's going to vary for everyone and this was also five years ago so times have changed um, how do you keep consistent sales and for me this is consistent listing um, by consistently listing new inventory, you're bringing in new buyers. They're going to see your new listings, your old listings. I think this also helps to boost you in the algorithm somehow, no matter what platform you're on. I think consistently listing is like the number one key to consistent sales. Like if you just list 20 things and expect, you know, sales to roll in over the next couple of weeks, like it's not going to be enough. You need to just continually list a little bit. How do you come up with a budget for inventory? So I currently do not have a budget for inventory. I mean, I have a business bank account with money in it and I'm not gonna spend more than I have. Like I, I'm not gonna buy stuff on credit. That's just how it works for me for my personal business. 
again, different for everyone. I'm not going to say that every time, but I um, want to just buy stuff if I have the money. So I don't really have a budget right now. When I first started, I didn't want to spend more than I was making. So I would always set aside enough for my bills and things like that. Um, and then whatever was left in the account that I had, that's what I could spend on my reselling. And that's kind of my budget loosely, but it's hard to answer that now because like I said, I don't really have a budget. How do you stay focused on work and not get distracted from household tasks? Well, <laughs> I have an easy answer. I'm not a very household tasks oriented person. <laughs> um, but no, really you just have to separate like the time that you're gonna work on work and have like a work schedule and then the time that you're you know going to work on home things so I typically will focus on work during the day and if I want to do other tasks like laundry or cleaning I'll do it either in the morning or on the weekends when I try not to work as much so it's just dedicating certain tasks to certain times but it's kind of hard because I hate doing stuff around the house, I hate cleaning, and I never wanna do it, so I'd rather work than do that. Okay, how do you manage to stay organized? I panic when someone buys something. So I've had that happen before in the very beginning when I had no system whatsoever, but I have since come up with an inventory system. I have a whole video on this, so I'm not gonna go into like too much depth on it. I'll link the video in the description down below. Um, but check that out, it's really worked for me having a system, and it doesn't have to be like mine. Just figure out a way of where you can keep your inventory inventory like separate and organized so you know where it's gonna be but coming up with a system I highly recommend it what is the hardest part of running a reselling business solo um, I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that is hard about it number one it's kind of lonely I will sometimes go thrifting with my mom um, I have you know friends that I've met through Poshmark and you know people that I've met through Instagram that I'll see in person out thrifting but you're doing a lot of this stuff alone so I think it can be kind of lonely sometimes because you don't really have coworkers. that's another reason I love YouTube because like right now me talking to this camera even though I'm sitting here by myself working I'm talking to all of you guys so it feels like I have other people that are working with me um, the other thing is it's just everything depends on you so if you don't feel like doing something if you don't feel like listing if you don't feel like sourcing if you're not doing it then you're not gonna get results and you might not make enough money to you know pay your bills or whatever so it's a lot of pressure um, to just maintain the flow maintain the rhythm that you can um, be able to support yourself or use the money for whatever you need it um, whether you're full-time or not so yeah there's a couple things but I think being lonely and just also just motivating yourself are the hardest parts because you don't have anyone else holding you accountable do you ever talk about your cost of goods no I really never talk about my cost of goods how much I spend on an item because I just personally don't think that's very beneficial to someone else figuring out like how much they should spend on reselling because again it's just up to your personal situation so and also prices are different throughout the country and wherever you may be you might be able to get inventory for a dollar two dollars some people shop at the goodwill outlet where they weigh stuff by the pound i don't have a goodwill out outlet by me so i don't have that option to get inventory that cheaply i might be willing to pay up for an item at like a consignment store or an estate sale and for you that might be too much to spend on inventory and i would just hate for me saying how much i paid for something to dissuade you from purchasing something that can potentially make you a profit so while i know it's really interesting and you want to know okay how much did you pay and how much exactly did you make from that specific sale of an item i just don't know if it's necessarily like beneficial because i don't think you're going to be able to find the exact item for the exact price and you might be happy making two times the investment on something whereas i might want to make five times the investment on something or i might be happy making five dollars on something but if you're gonna spend the time doing everything to find the item clean it list it ship it you want to make twenty dollars an item like there's just so much that goes into it so i am probably never going to share cost of goods and also i'm trying to obviously make a profit on things and people that watch this are sometimes my customers and while you understand that I am doing this as a business like I just don't think it looks good to say this is exactly how much I'm making from something so that's just my personal thought on it um the other question how do you know what will sell and the answer is I don't 
I still make mistakes all the time. When I first started, I bought tons of stuff that I would never buy now, but it was a really good learning experience. And everything is pretty much trial and error in this business. You're gonna figure out what sells for you, what your customer likes to buy. If you wanna build like a curated closet like I have, um, then you can kind of pick up similar styles and you'll have repeat customers increasing your cart size and for me that's kind of the goal so I don't always know what's gonna sell I still buy stuff all the time that will sit there forever and ever and ever and I'm like why did I buy that um, but you'll never know until you try because sometimes this thing that you'll buy that you'll try out is the thing that sells first and you're like I would never expect that to sell and then you discover this whole new category or brand or style that is desirable so just try stuff out and you'll learn over time. Would you say you source more from thrift stores or estate sales? And for me, I source more from thrift stores. I just have so many thrift stores available where I am. I'm in a city, I'm in Atlanta, which is very large. We have tons and tons and tons of thrift stores, specifically Goodwill. I think that's why I mentioned Goodwill so much because there's so many Goodwill locations in Metro Atlanta and around. And we don't have as many other thrift stores. Like I know some places, Salvation Army is really popular. Um, you know, like some people said they have outlets, Goodwill bins, things like that, that I don't have available. But I definitely thrift more. I love estate sales. I would shop primarily at estate sales if I could, just because I like being able to get um, a good amount of inventory at once. And I think you can find really unique stuff, but they're very, very hit or miss. I think over the past few weekends, I've gone to a few estate sales and I haven't bought anything. So it's just um, very hit or miss. I find more at thrift stores. Oh, and someone else asked, how do you find estate sales? And I use estatesales.net. You put in your zip code and you can see what is in your area. And you're never gonna know what's there. There's pictures, but it's again, hit or miss. Okay, the next two questions kind of go hand in hand. So it is, how often do you thrift or go to the same Goodwills? And how many times do you source a week right now? So um, right now I'm probably sourcing more than I ever have before because I think it's a little harder to find inventory. So I will go to the same thrift stores. I have about seven I frequent each week. Um, and then there's other ones I spend sprinkle throughout. So I probably source five to seven days a week. I'll stop by and I'll go in and I'll go to the same ones like maybe two times a week, maybe three. It really just depends what area I'm in, what my plans are. Um, but once you start going to the same stores more frequently, you also can just look at the new stuff. So I usually see what the new color is and I'm focusing on looking at those items instead of looking through like every single thing because otherwise it would take me forever. So it just um, depends on how much I find because I want to you know, list consistently, but I'm not finding as much. I'm gonna go source more often. Also my thrift stores put stuff out frequently. Like a lot of our Goodwills put a bunch of new stuff out each day so I think it's probably different if you're in a smaller town where they might only put stuff out on certain days or at certain times so I think it really just depends in that way too but since I know my Goodwills put stuff out daily I don't mind going um, a few times a week. Has your method of sourcing changed since COVID? And yes, it has. Like I mentioned before, I'm thrifting more frequently, but right after, um, you know, quarantine, some of the rules and regulations kind of loosened up a little bit and stores started opening. I was having a lot of trouble thrifting stuff because I felt like Goodwill wasn't putting stuff out on the floor. I think they were shorter staffed, um, you know, whatever their sanitation process was, it was taking a lot longer from things to go from donation to the sales floor. So I was not finding very much inventory thrifting. Um, so I started doing more retail arbitrage, which retail arbitrage is when you go to um, a you know retail store, a discount store like TJ Maxx, Nordstrom Rack, Marshalls, Ross, um, all those kinds of places, and you look for items that you think you could resell online for a profit. So I was doing that because those stores seem to have a little bit more inventory, and they were also having a lot of sales. So while I was getting a deal, I was paying a lot more than I was for like thrifted items, but I just had to do whatever I could to get new inventory in and get new listings, and I did have the budget for it, and I was making sales on that stuff, but now that the thrift stores I think are putting out more items you know frequently I've gone back to primarily thrifting I don't think I bought anything retail arbitrage in at least 
two months and not to say that I wouldn't but um, it is a very high cost of goods and I can find great stuff thrifting so I would rather spend less and make a higher profit margin if I can but it just depends on what's available to me so that changed for a little bit doing retail arbitrage but I've kind of gone back to just mostly thrifting when sourcing do you buy an item based on label brand or style of the item. So I talk about this a lot in my videos and I say how I'm kind of different from other resellers and the fact that I really pay attention more to style than brand, um, especially with, I think, there being more resellers these days, you have to do something that stands out, makes you a little bit more unique, that draws people to you. And I like having a more curated closet, having a specific style, and I really focus on finding things that fit that style. Brand can also be important, but it's not the only thing. So say I go to a store and I find, you know, an item that's an amazing brand and it's an item from like 10 years ago that's a style that no one's gonna wear. I'm not gonna buy it just because it's a really popular, great brand because no one's gonna want that style. For me, it's more important to have something that's in style, that's a trend or, you know, something that people are searching for right now versus it being a brand. And I also think people are just really seeking out unique styles right now especially with so many different aesthetics that are out there like y2k stuff 90s style um a lot of vintage is really popular and these are things that are a little bit harder to find so i think the buyer is willing to pay a little bit more money and it doesn't necessarily have to be the brand so you need to really pay attention when you're listing to adding keywords taking really good photos descriptions because um, they might be searching for something based on the keyword of the style versus looking for the brand. But um, yeah, if I won't buy something specifically just for the brand, I'm going to buy it because it's in style. Do you buy a lot of luxury fashion? No, I do not buy a lot of luxury fashion. Higher end brands and really expensive designer items tend to sit for a long time for me. What I've been doing lately is if I find them, I send them to a thread up, which I'm going to talk about later in the Q&A. Where do you source higher end items? Do you do retail arbitrage? Okay, this kind of goes back to before. So I find that most of my items at thrift stores or estate sales. And yes, you can find higher end stuff retail arbitrage, but I really don't do that very often anymore. So um, even when I was doing it, I didn't want to spend that much on stuff. So I wasn't buying higher end. And since I knew like designer and luxury sits for me, I don't typically spend a lot on it. How do you handle difficult customers? Honestly, I feel like I haven't had too many difficult customers. I feel like for me, it's, I just don't let little things annoy me. I don't really find customers that difficult because I've worked in retail in person for years and years and years. I worked for Nordstrom and let me tell you, I dealt with some difficult customers then. So for me, like people online are easy. I think it's so much easier to deal with someone online because you just like communicate with them and you just have to be patient, put yourself in their shoes. I never like take anything too personally. If someone feels really strongly about an item or feels like I did something to wrong them, I usually will like just try to make them happy. I don't know if that's the right way or the wrong way, but if someone wants to really return something and you know, they're going out of their way to like come up with some kind of idea as to why they need to return it, or maybe it's valid, maybe I did make a mistake, that's fine, return the item, I will just you know, fix it or resell it or relist it, whatever it may be. It's kind of the cost of doing business, but I really feel like you get what you put out there. So I feel like I'm as truthful and honest as I can be with my items, um, with answering questions. If people have questions about like sizing and stuff, I try to give them my honest opinion, which I know is hard online. And, you know, people receive that well that you're putting in the effort. So, yeah, there's always gonna be difficult people, but just try to handle it and put yourself in their shoes. How do you deal with slow seasons in business? So there are always ups and downs. Sales is a roller coaster and you just have to be the consistent line across it. So even though things are going up and down, you wanna stay steady and stay the mainstream. So even though when things are really slow, you're not making sales, it can be easy to say like, oh, I don't feel like doing this. I don't wanna list anything. You know, I just want to do nothing because nothing's happening and that's exactly what you need not to do you need to continue to list and do the things you normally would because 
things are going to pick up and you want to have new listings and stuff available for when the season and the sales do pick up like q4 right now is the busiest time of year um, if I hadn't have been listing stuff for the past few months, I probably wouldn't have as many sales as I'm having. So just be consistent and try not to let slow sales get you down. Um, what do you do if you travel for a long time? How do you get back in the game after? I've actually never taken a trip longer than a week since I've been reselling and that's been five years now. So um, for me, like I don't notice too much of a difference with a week. I usually just communi communicate to the customer, you know, it's gonna be delayed shipping whatever it may be, but the best part about owning your own business is you own your time and you can live your life. I can't tell you how many times I had to say no to weddings, birthday parties, trips, events, things like that, that were, um, you know, I had to travel to because I only had two weeks of vacation time. And the one thing I told myself when I switched to having my own business is I'm always gonna say yes to whatever it is I wanna do if I can do it. So if I need to take two weeks off for, you know, a trip or if I need to go take care of a family member for a month and I need to put my business on hold, I'm just going to do it because this is the time that you can really own your own business. And like I said, I haven't taken a trip longer than a week, but if I were to do something longer, I would probably put some kind of plan in place, like having a family member or like a friend I've met like I said before, so many people through Instagram or Poshmark that I'm close with, like see if they could ship for me or whatever it may be, just put a plan in place. But um, when it comes down to it, if I just need to put things on hold for a little bit, I would because that's the joy of having your own business. And that might not be the right answer, but you know, that's my answer. Would you ever consider selling on another platform again? If so, which one? So I started on Poshmark only and then I started selling on eBay as well for a couple of years and I made a good amount of sales on eBay. And for me, it was just hard splitting my time between the two platforms plus doing social media. It took up a lot of time. And I feel like when I was on two platforms, I was kind of splitting the sales evenly. So like for instance, the last year that I sold on Poshmark and eBay, you know, I had a certain sales number. And then the next year when I sold only on Poshmark, I surpassed the number that was on both the platforms together. So because I was able to really focus on one and direct like all my customers and all my sales to one place, I ended up making more money. I know that might not be the case for everyone, but like Poshmark for me was my bigger platform. So that's what I wanted to focus on. And like I said, where I want to direct people. I think if I were ever to sell on another platform, it would be my own website. And I'm thinking about opening like a Shopify or my own store or something like that where um, I would list all my stuff or I don't know exactly how it worked. Maybe I'd list some stuff on my own site and then certain things on Poshmark, but that might be something I go into in 2021, but I don't think I would necessarily go back to listing on like eBay or another platform just because I don't like those platforms as much. I like the ease of use on Poshmark and yeah, I just think it's easier to direct people to one place. So Poshmark and then potentially maybe my own website one day who knows what do you do with stale items that won't sell so I'm kind of stubborn I honestly leave stuff in my store for quite a while on Poshmark I have some stuff that's been listed for probably a year and a half and I haven't relisted it or done anything with it but some of some of that stuff has sold recently so I have a lot of storage space so I'm pretty um patient with my sales but Recently, I've started sending some of my stale inventory to ThreadUp, which I'll mention again in a little bit. Okay, the next two questions kind of go together. I got a lot of questions about these, I always do, and it's how do you do your bookkeeping and you know, how do you do your taxes for reselling, Poshmark, et cetera, and my Number one tip and what I always recommend is hiring a professional. Um, I don't know about you. I really know nothing about accounting. I did take accounting 101 in college. It was my only C that I've ever gotten in my life and it was very hard. So I'm not naturally like good or understanding of accounting and things like that. I've learned a lot over the years from my accountant, but I would rather just hire it out to a professional, someone that's trained, that's up to date on everything and can really make sure that I do everything correctly. So that's what I do. I have an accountant and he does my taxes every year. He tells me what numbers he needs and I've learned you know, over the years what I need to track. So I was really bad in the beginning and I never knew like, 
I don't know, it would just take me so long to get stuff together for my taxes. So what I ended up doing a couple years ago is just coming up with my own Google spreadsheet of what I needed to track based on everything he always asked me for. So I have a big spreadsheet each year for my reselling and I track each month individually. So I'll do like January, February, March, they each have a tab for you know my sales, my fees, my expenses, my cost of goods, you know, if I travel, my mileage, whatever it may be, I track it individually each month and then I have one big master at the end where I put everything together and that's all the information that I send him. Um, you could use programs like I think Quicken or QuickBooks, one of those has like a self-employed kind of thing and you know it's probably like a spreadsheet already done for you but for me this was easy and it was free just to like create my own spreadsheet and I like it better because I understand like what I'm going to be putting in it and yeah I don't know that just works for me as having my own spreadsheet and having a professional accountant even though I'm not the best at always staying up to date on my spreadsheet I know I should enter it in daily you know when I spend something or when I you know drive somewhere enter everything in right there but usually what I do is do it every like month or two I update my spreadsheet I'll just go through like all the information from you know my sales, my um, bank account, whatever it is, and type all of that in and that way I have it ready for tax time. So that's my answer for that. I am not a professional. Um, my friend Chriselle, I know she has a course about accounting and taxes for your resale business. I think when she first came out with it, I know I like looked through it and I took it and I you know, got some good information from that and helped me understand things better, but I know I'm not gonna do taxes on my own, but I'll link her course down in the description box, so if you wanna check that out or see what that's about, you can. Um, she comes up with some really great information because she was an accountant. Uh, the next thing is, how are your sales this year to last year? So for me, um, my sales are pretty on track with last year. I did have some slower times, but I've kind of supplemented that with me selling on Instagram and I've had less fees when I sell on Instagram direct to my customers. So it's kind of um, made up for maybe some slower times in sales, but I have been busy on Poshmark. I've been listing consistently. When I wasn't listing consistently was when I had the slower times. So it's all about, like I mentioned before, being consistent on there. So I think for me, it's pretty steady but it has had lower times. Do you use stock photos and what are your hints for finding stock photos easier? So I know stock photos is a very hot topic. It's very controversial and before I talk about this, you do you, you do what's best for you, you know, I'm gonna do what's best for me and I do use stock photos. I know most people do. Is it right? Um, not necessarily sometimes because yes, the company that creates the image owns the image. I try not to use the stock photo as the first photo in my listing unless it's something that like looks really bad on the hanger or doesn't show the item well. I try to put the stock photo later in my listing, but I use them and I think it can help you with sales. I also try to model my stuff sometimes, but that's not all, always feasible because, you know, stuff's not always going to fit you and it just takes a lot of time. So um, yes, I use stock photos and my biggest tip for finding them is look on Poshmark or eBay or other platforms because a lot of times other resellers do the work for you and they've already found the stock photo. So if I'm looking for, you know, a free people dress or whatever it may be, I type it in the search description of Poshmark and I try to be pretty vague with the description and I just look through search results of available and sold listings. I'll do all and I'll see if I see someone else that already has the stock photo for that item and I just screenshot it and reuse that same photo. Um, Pinterest is another really good resource for stock photos. You can go on there again, just search for a description of the item and look through results. And then Google image, I will do the same thing. And you can also filter by color on Google image results. You can filter by so many different things on Poshmark and eBay. So, um, I try those areas first just because it's a little bit easier if some, someone else has already done the work for you. But yeah, that's typically what I do. It does take a lot of time to find stock photos sometimes, so I don't spend a lot of time on it. If I can't find a, a stock photo quickly, I'll just list the item and then maybe I'll go back later and add the stock photo, but it might sell before I even need to find it. 
Don't let finding a stock photo hold you up from listing an item or don't spend too much time on it. What are your must have reselling supplies and where do you buy them? So the best thing about reselling is you need basically very little supplies. Really you just need your phone um, as a way to take pictures and you can list from your phone, etc. So you can use natural light, you can you know hang things on a wall or a back of a closet. You don't need to spend a ton of money on stuff. So um, supplies are things that I think you can accumulate and acquire over time as you feel like you might need something to help you increase your business. So starting out, I would say don't spend too much money on investing in stuff. But for me, the number one thing that I use every single day that I think helps so much is lighting. And I personally like softbox lights. I just think they create really good lighting. I've tried really expensive lights and those are my favorites. So um, lights and Maybe um, I like having a rolling rack because I like organizing my stuff, hanging it before I photograph and list and all of that. And then the other thing I really use every single day, but I didn't invest in for probably at least maybe a year was a label printer. I use the uh, Dymo label printer and I know a lot of people like Rolo, whatever it may be, whatever your preference, a label printer saves so much time because especially a thermal label printer because you never need to buy ink and it prints on little sticky labels so you can just stick them on your package. You don't have to like cut out and tape shipping labels. But all this to say, I have a whole like Amazon shop with all my favorite reselling supplies. I have, you know, all the things I mentioned. I have cleaning supplies that I use. Um, I don't know, lighting, all kinds of stuff. And it's linked in the description box. It's in every video that I have. I always link it so you can check that out. Um, but yeah, I link a lot of that stuff on there. And like I said, don't feel like you have to spend a lot right away because you really don't need to. What do you feel is your biggest strength and weakness as a reseller? So <laughs> this is a really good question. Um, my biggest strength is something that I feel like I've always had in my life. And that's like my creativity and just my sense of style. I've always really liked unique things, unique clothing. I've had my own style growing up and you know, I was always dressing different than my friends. So I think having like, a good eye for fashion and a unique style is something that really helps me because it's helped me to create a more um, curated closet and also a unique aesthetic and it's something that's helped me with my brand because when people think of certain styles they think of empty hanger so that's really helped me my biggest weakness as a reseller is also one of my biggest biggest weaknesses as a human being and that is procrastination I am such a big procrastinator um, I'm the famous just do it later kind of person and I always put things off and it's the worst. I try to make to-do lists and just somehow certain things get pushed further and further back. I hate it about myself. I've always tried to change it, but something about me, the way I was born, I am just a procrastinator and that does hurt you sometimes in reselling because if I'm procrastinating on listing or you know doing certain things, it's just going to hold me back. So I really want to get better about that. Um, and being more on a schedule. I think I've said this every single year since I've been a reseller, but I want to come up with a better like work schedule for myself and really stick to it. What's your advice for someone that doesn't live by a Goodwill to source? Um, if you don't live by a Goodwill, definitely check to see if there's other thrift stores. A lot of times if I'm in new areas, I'll just Google or I'll look on Yelp. I'll type in thrift stores and see because I really like going to the smaller thrift stores if I can. Sometimes they have better prices. Um, they have really unique stuff, but again, they might not put as much inventory out as bigger thrift stores, but there's lots of opportunity and I like supporting smaller businesses and smaller um, organizations because some of those, you know, 100% of the profits go to, you know, a some kind of organization so I really like doing that so look for smaller thrift stores you can check and see if there's consignment stores buy sell trade stores which is um, a place like Plato's Closet or Buffalo Exchange check and see if there are garage sales every weekend and if anyone's selling clothing you could post on next door and see if anyone's willing to donate clothing to you to sell or if you could buy old clothing of theirs you could um go on facebook marketplace and then the other thing is like liquidations which i don't really do a lot of my friend denali el ducho on youtube and instagram she posts about it all the time I'll, I'll put her name right here but she posts about liquidation and things like that she buys stuff and it comes directly to her house so that's an option for you um so there are other ways to do it besides just goodwill and that's the thing is you have to figure out what is in your area 
Um, what process do you use to bleach your items? If you've been following me on Instagram or on my Poshmark, I've been posting a lot of like bleached flannels, bleached t-shirts, bleached sweatshirts. So I um, have been doing kind of re reverse tie-dye, which is just tie-dyeing with bleach. And it's half bleach, half water tie-dye your item or bleach your item and wash it. I can do a tutorial if you guys want to see a DIY on bleach items. Let me know in the comment section down below. Okay, and that is it for the general reselling questions. The other um, sections aren't quite as big because I tried to consolidate as many as I could and make them more general. So we'll go into the Poshmark questions next. How many new listings do you do a day, a week, a month? And the next question kind of goes along with that. How many listings do you typically have? So right now I have 813 listings. I just looked it up before I filmed this video. And I would say I typically have um, between like 600 and 800. I might try and add a little more and get to like a thousand um, just because it is a busier time right now. But I would say I like to have less than a thousand, but it's really not about a specific number of listings that I'm doing each day, week or month for me. It's about the dollar total. So if you go into your um, seller tools on Poshmark and you look at your Poshmark stats, you can see like the value of your closet. And I try to keep the value of my closet over a certain dollar amount because I typically sell um, a certain percentage each month so if I have it set at a certain higher dollar amount I'm gonna sell a certain percent and that's really what I focus on do you share your own closet and how do you share um so yeah I do share my own closet I have a video on this the fastest way to share it's still the same way that I share my closet on an iPad I just click and share each listing and I do it through the web versus the app because I find that's faster. Um, someone asked if I do edit next list, which is um, like a whole method or whatever that some people think is faster at sharing. But for me, I find that takes a lot more time. So I don't do edit next list. I just share normal from my iPad. And how many times a day do you share? I share um, once a day usually, sometimes twice a day, but lately I feel like sharing hasn't been as important as listing new items. So if I am choosing between sharing or listing, I would rather list than share, but I like to list once a day just to like boost my listings and freshen things up. Do you relist items that have sat for a long time? I kind of mentioned this before. I have some items that have been in my closet for a really long time. So I'm really bad about like relisting. I really don't do it. Um, I probably should do it more frequently, but I just don't and that's being honest. Do you keep your closet in an order by category? Um, no, I like to mix things up because I just don't like having a block of one type of item. If someone comes into your closet and you have like 50 pairs of shoes and then all your clothes are further down, if they're not gonna scroll very far, they might think your closet only has shoes and therefore you might lose potentially a sale if they're looking for a top or if they wanna purchase shoes and a dress or something like that. So um, I like to just totally have it mixed up and they can also search in your closet with the filters. So if they're looking for a specific like style or category, they can do that. When do you feel is the best time to send offers to likers? I don't do offers to likers as much as I used to, but I always feel like the best time is around payday. So typically people get paid on Fridays. Sometimes their direct deposit will hit Thursday night. So sometimes I'll do offer slikers like Thursday night and then that way it's good for 24 hours for when people get paid on Friday. Um, especially doing it at night, like sometimes it just takes so long to go through all my closet and do the offers that um, I can do it then and have my day free on Friday. But on Friday morning is another really good time just because again, if people just got paid and they see you put an item on sale that they've really been wanting, then they might be more likely to jump on it and purchase it. Okay, last Poshmark question. Any words of advice for someone who wants to sell on Poshmark but is scared to start? So just do it. <laughs> um, don't think about it too much. I think that's the hard part with social media and all this information. I know I'm contributing to it right now by like sharing all this information on YouTube, but I think you just have to do it and experience it for yourself. When I first started reselling, there was no Instagram. I didn't know anyone else that was a reseller. I just was doing everything trial and error and figuring it out. And I think now it's almost like there's so much information out there. It would probably hinder me too. Just thinking like, am I doing it right? Do my pictures, are they perfect enough? 
don't worry about that. You're going to get better as you go with anything. With YouTube, for example, I had no idea what I was doing in the beginning. I don't even like to watch my videos from the beginning because I just feel like it's so different from what I do now. But if I had never made those videos, I wouldn't be where I am today. So you just have to rip off the band-aid. Just do it. Don't worry about it. You're going to make mistakes and that's how you're going to learn and you're going to grow. Okay, moving on to thread up questions. And this is something that's pretty new for me. I might eventually make a separate video on thread up but for now I just pulled a few questions that I want to talk about someone asked do you sell to thread up give me an update on your thread up experience in general so yes I am selling on thread up and if you follow me on Instagram I have talked about this before I've kind of shown a little bit about it I started selling on thread up probably like three or four months ago and I saw a bunch of other people doing it on Instagram I got influenced and I thought let me try this because I want to be able to send stuff in and have them list it and of course sell it I think that would be really cool and also a little bit easy I wasn't feeling as motivated so I thought that might help me just to you know get going with things so I started selling on thread up and what I did I actually took a course um, the same person I mentioned before about accounting she actually has a course on thread up as well she's been selling on there forever and has been really successful and for me again like I mentioned with accounting I don't mind paying someone for their expertise especially if it's gonna help me to be more efficient so I just wanted to get all the information I could about thread up versus like experimenting myself because with that you're sending in your stuff and it takes a lot of time so I feel like it would take me a really long time to learn thread up and I'd rather just get that information now I'm not saying you need to have a course you don't at all you can totally do it yourself and figure it out yourself this is just what I did so I took the course I learned all about it I started sending in stuff and I have made quite a bit I've been on there for about four months and I've made about four thousand dollars which I think is pretty good for me it's just a supplement to whatever else I'm doing it is not like a main source of income for me but I like having different revenue streams and it is pretty passive because with thread up all you have to do is send in your stuff and they do the photos the listing the shipping you know everything yes they do take a good chunk of the item of the um profit of the item but you're still making decent money and the only stuff that I send to thread up is stuff that I wouldn't list myself so like for instance I find a lot of J McLaughlin it's just a really expensive brand they have a store in Atlanta I don't know I find a ton of it here and it's not something that I would sell myself it doesn't go with my closet theme or aesthetic um, it's not really my customer but I know it's worth something so I started sending that in to thread up and I'm also sending in my still inventory so items that I have had listed a really long time that are not necessarily something I would buy again I've been sending in a little bit of that at a time so I'm not sourcing specifically for thread up I'm just sending in stuff that I am finding so um like stuff that I'm finding when I'm outsourcing for Poshmark and for stuff to resell if I just see something that I think would be good on thread up I purchase it hopefully that makes sense I feel like I was just rambling so I'll link the course I'm talking about in the description box below but like I said you do not need a course you can just totally experiment um so going back to thread up oh someone else told me that or asked me if I was able to get labels and I know that's a whole thing right now that they're pretty overwhelmed with inventory and stuff being sent in so some people are able to request labels or clean out kits and some people aren't um, I don't know the reasoning behind that and what accounts can request and what can't I can request stuff so I have been able to send it in but I'm really I feel bad for anyone that can't it looks like things are starting to get better they opened a new processing center that's actually like really close to where I live um, so I think they're like increasing their manpower so hopefully that's gonna help and have them be able to process more but it's just kind of like a luck of the draw of if you can get labels or clean out kits. Did ThreadUp take everything you sent? If not, do you have them send it back? So I have had some bags where they have taken 100% everything I've sent in, and then I've had some boxes or bags where they've sent a few things back. I do the return assurance. Um, I think that one, I get all the prices mixed up. I think it's $10.99. $10.99 to have them send it back to you and I want to do this because if they don't take an item I'm either going to sell it myself or I will um, resend it into them or I might take it to a buy sell trade store um, it just depends you know when I get the item back I really look over it closely to see if something's wrong with it because that's what I've noticed is when they don't take an item is if there's a flaw on it they pretty much take 
everything I feel like that you send them they're not too um strict on like brand and stuff I feel like even the lower end brands they really like those and those sell pretty quickly but usually when they send stuff back there's a flaw so just be sure to check that over um, you can have them donate the items back if you don't want to, or donate the items if you don't want to pay the $10. How many items do you sell average in a box or a bag? So um, it just depends how much I can fit in the bag, but I would say about 75% of the items sell, and then there's about a quarter that um, haven't sold by the time it expires. I've really only had two boxes expire. Um, or not expire, but like I've had to reclaim the items before the window closes. So there's a 60 day or a 90 day consignment window on ThreadUp. It's done through consignment and you can get your items back before that window closes. So I have had to reclaim some items because they did not sell and I've gotten those back and then I'm just going to pack them up and send them back again because just like with anything, it depends what someone is looking for at that time. So, you know, maybe in those 60 or 90 days, no one was looking for that J. Crew sweater, but you send it back in again and like a week later it sells because someone got on the app and was searching for that at the exact moment. So I would say about 75% sells the first time, but then you just send it back if you need to, or I'll relist it. I'll list it myself on Poshmark. Okay, last thread up question. Are you mostly sending to thread up or focusing on Poshmark? Definitely focusing more on Poshmark and selling on Instagram myself because um, I'm going to make more selling it myself than sending it to ThreadUp. And like I said before, ThreadUp is more of like a just supplemental kind of income for me. I'm happy if I'm making $1,000 a month on there. Um, I don't really have a specific goal yet. Right now, I think I have about 100 and something active listings on um, ThreadUp. I haven't sent them a box in a little bit and I need to send them one soon so I can have like some fresh stuff going in but for me I focus more of my time on what I'm sourcing to sell myself and it's just if I come across anything then I'm gonna send it to thread up or you know I have an old item that's not selling I'll send it to them but I'm not like going out of my way to spend hours and hours looking for stuff to sell on thread up just because for me I just don't think it's as profitable. It's a little bit more passive. Okay. And then the final section of questions is social media questions, which these are fun. Um, mostly about YouTube, a couple about Instagram. And it's funny cause I've been on such a social media break for like months and months and months that I feel like I'm not qualified to answer these because I haven't been practicing what I preach but I'll just give you my best answers. So um, number one is how did you grow your YouTube channel, which I still can't get over having over 70,000 subscribers. Like that's crazy to me. That is such a wild number. And just having, you know, anyone watch my videos is crazy. So thank you if you're subscribed. If you're not, you should definitely subscribe um, so you can catch all my videos. But I think it was just in posting consistent content. I think having a niche really helps. So having this whole reselling niche, you're going to reach out and reach people that are looking for this kind of information. And reselling is pretty popular right now. So I just feel like a lot of people are seeking out that information and it's, um, a way that you can grow your channel quickly is just by, you know, focusing your content on something specific like that. Um, posting consistently, like I said, you know, like I said, I'm not practicing what I preach, although I'm trying to get back into it. But, you know, your video, your viewers want to see new videos. So whether that be like one new video a week, two, two new videos a week, whatever you can handle um, posting consistently. And it just takes a long time to build. I think I've been on YouTube for three years now. I have to look at it. Um, but three years and you know, it has taken me a while to get to where I am and nothing happens overnight. Yeah, just having a niche and posting consistently helps to grow your channel. Oh, and, and someone else said, what do you think has made your channel so successful? And for me, I think it's just being myself. I know the word authentic is overused, overhyped, and I see my dog has joined us. Um, but being your true self, like I just am who I am, and I guess people connect with that. I'm not, you know, trying to put on some show. Like I said, I'm just a girl sharing my journey with you. So I think it's interesting for people to see some normal person doing this, having success with reselling. And also I just try to make my 
content interesting like for me I know this video is gonna be like an hour long and that's kind of a struggle because I don't know if anyone wants to sit here and listen to me talk for an hour um, usually with my videos with hauls and things like that I try to edit them down and take out any kind of filler I try not to like talk too much um, you know I just try to be more intentional with the content I'm creating and I try to come up with a plan even for this video like I separated the questions out by categories because I thought that would make a little bit more sense and be a little easier to listen to than just like so many random questions if I film a day in my life video I kind of come up with like a loose plan of what my day is going to look like or if I'm doing a sit down video explaining something I like come up with the whole script before and just kind of talk about it because I just want it to be interesting and I want it to flow and I want you guys to enjoy it. So I think me putting in effort and time and spending time editing has helped me to be successful, I guess. And I watch a lot of like non resellers. I know there's a lot of reselling channels out there. I don't watch a lot of them because I don't want to compare myself to others. I like to watch non reselling videos and I get inspiration from other genres. So I watch like a lot of vloggers, a lot of like fashion Instagram people, and I kind of take ideas from other niches and apply it to my niche. And Megan is now joining me and licking my arm, so I think you need to chill. Anyways, if you see him over here, that's him. But yeah, I think, um, like I said, just trying to make my content interesting and easily digestible has helped me be successful. Do you ever feel you will be redundant with your information? And yeah, I do feel that way sometimes, but you never know who is tuning into your channel. I've gotten so many messages from people that say they just discovered me over quarantine. And you know, I've been making videos for three years. So if they never watch a video that I made three years ago, then they might not get some information that I said then. So while yes, I feel like I'm redundant sometimes, you never know someone's gonna get something from that information that they might not have gotten before or um, something's just gonna click in someone's head or I don't know my thoughts change on things like you could watch a Q&A that I did two years ago and I could be answering the same question in a totally different way because you have to change things <laughs> with the time so yeah thoughts opinions times change and yeah, I don't know. Don't worry about being redundant. Will you be doing Thriftmas again? I have been thinking about this for like the last two months. <laughs> Thriftmas, if you didn't follow me last year, I thrifted every single day until Christmas. It was like my version of Vlogmas. And I thrifted every single day and I would take you along to the thrift store and I would do a thrift haul and then I would have the stuff listed that night. So that was a lot of work. It was really fun. It was fun thrifting every day. Um, I definitely think I'm going to do some form of thriftmas this year. I don't know if it's going to be thrifting every day. I might interchange like thrifting with more like sit down videos, daily vlog videos. I don't know, but I will probably do something like it. Thumbs up this video if you want me to do some kind of thriftmas. Okay, do most of your sales come from Poshmark or Instagram direct now? So I love selling through Instagram. If you guys have been following me, I mentioned it before. Um, I'll do hauls of thrift finds on Instagram and I will offer those items at like a lower price. I cover the shipping and you know, it's just a way to give my followers a little bit of a perk or an incentive for following me. If you like shopping with me, um, I can sell the items for a lower cost because I'm not paying the Poshmark fees and I include the shipping price. I pay for the shipping basically. Um, so yeah, I really like selling through Instagram. However, I only do maybe one Instagram sale a week. There was a point where I was doing a little more frequently, but I want to keep my posh going. So I like to list on there as well. So I definitely sell way more on, on Poshmark than on Instagram because I'm only doing like a couple sales here and there on Instagram, but I really like doing them because, um, it is like quick and easy. Do you prefer selling through Instagram versus Posh? So there's definitely pros and cons to both, but I do really love selling through Instagram because it is just so fast, easy, efficient. Um, the cycle of an item is so quick, so I can sell something, get out there and buy some more and sell some more. So it's like, I don't know, it's crazy to me how fast something can go through the life cycle of you buying and selling the item through Instagram. Um, obviously it helps because I have a lot of followers, but it doesn't mean, like you don't have to have a lot of followers to sell on Instagram. It all depends on who is seeing your story and what they're looking for. But I like it because all I need to do is 
a quick video of the item. I don't have to spend the time measuring the item, taking photos, editing the photos, uploading them, doing the listing, etc. I just do a video and I go through the details of the item. And if someone asks, I'll do measurements, but a lot of times they don't ask. Um, and then I just have to invoice the person through PayPal or Venmo is the way that I do it. And then I either buy the shipping label through PayPal or pirate ship is another option. So, um, yeah, it's really fast. It's really efficient and quick and I like it a lot, but I still love Poshmark too. And, um, you know, not everything sells right away on Instagram. So if it doesn't sell in the 24 hours, my story's live, then I list it on Poshmark and there's more opportunity there for someone to find you and not only find that one item, but then to find like all the other stuff that you're listed and you might have more of a repeat customer. So it really just depends, but I love the quickness of Instagram. Okay, and the final question is how important is social media for running a successful Poshmark slash reselling business? And I say these days, social media is key. Um, there's so many different forms of social media and ways that you can advertise your business and social media is basically free. I mean, it's your time, but you are able to reach so many people um, just by putting out some content and pushing them to buy your items. So main social media for me are Instagram and of course YouTube. And I started out with Instagram. I had no idea what I was doing, no idea what I was posting. I honestly still don't. I just post a lot of stories and I think that's what people enjoy. Um, but I think again, it's really crucial these days because it's, it's marketing, it's advertising and that's how people find things. I know a lot of times, like if I'm looking for a new restaurant or you know something, I'll look on hashtags on Instagram or I'll look to different influencers and see what they're posting. So um, I think it's really key. Yeah, YouTube is a lot more, you know, work and not as many people are comfortable as comfortable sitting in front of the camera like this and maybe feel like they don't have stuff to share. So that's a little bit harder to get into. There's TikTok, which I just started a TikTok recently, shameless self promo. It's also empty hanger. I try to keep everything consistent and it's crazy how many people view stuff on TikTok and how people find you and you never know what's going to go viral. So that's like my goal for the rest of this year actually is to focus more on TikTok. I only have I think three TikToks right now, which if you're not familiar with TikTok, it's like a quick video sharing platform. You can make um, short, like 15 second, 30 second, 60 second videos. And yeah, it's just really interesting. So I definitely um, say, take a look at that. And if you're not you know, comfortable using TikTok, I know there's like a lot of controversy around it. You can do very similar things on Instagram reels and create little videos. But I just think people are out there looking for new ways to consume content and any kind of promotion, any kind of content you create is promotion for your business, whatever it may be. And I've seen so many like TikToks and stuff like that about people that have gained, you know, so much success just by posting videos and things. And yeah, you never know what it's going to be. I feel like this is totally a ramble. I, my thoughts are kind of all over the place because I feel like I've been sitting here talking to you for an hour, but I, Basically what it boils down to is yes, social media is very important. However you want to take it, you don't have to show your face, but I think being consistent with your brand and posting consistent content is really, really helpful. So that being said, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this Q and A because I know it's very long and I hope you really enjoyed it. I hope um, you gained a kernel of knowledge out of this or something that might have clicked with you. Um, if not, maybe I just kept you company on a very long walk or, you know, while you're doing all your work for the day. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you listening. And um, if you have any suggestions for videos or things that you want to see, let me know in the comment section down below because I'm always open to them. I want to create stuff that you guys want to watch and enjoy. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.